This is Stephen Young and Marlo Singh, our top realtor here at Young Realty. And this week on Condo Corner, we're going to be bringing you some information and insight into the Toronto condo market. So we're sitting right now in one of our uh, the, the most latest property we've just developed and invested in. And we're going to talk about that as well uh, next up here on Condo Corner. This is Stephen Young here. So uh, with Marlo Singh. So Marlo's our, our frontline uh, agent. He's there. He's on boots on the ground with the clients, sellers, buyers, you name it. Uh, I have obviously the same experience. Uh, he just has more of it now re in the recent market. Uh, he does more of that work for us, whereas I'm more on the investment side of things now. And this unit that we're in now is uh, 2000 Islington. This is a unit that we've invested in. Marlo is, is uh, discovered it for me and he's fantastic at finding amazing opportunities. So I again, appreciate that. No problem. Uh, so this unit is, is an interesting store. We talked about this on a, on a previous episode whereby the agent uh, who sold it to us basically undersold the unit just to get it done. And the challenge of just getting it done is they undersell it for their client. It's just an opportunity for me to purchase it. And Marlo jumped on the deal. He knew it was an amazing deal at, the, at that opportunity. Do you want to talk about your experience uh, of the agent or about like how you found the property? Um, what, what was it for you that really stuck out in your, in your head? So what stuck out to me is that this unit was completely original, uh, 1990s original when we... Um, no, older than that. Older than that, but it looked yeah. like it was done in yeah, the Yeah, it's probably like 80s looking <laughs> like that, yeah. yeah. Right, but what it is, is in this building, there are lots of units that are being renovated. They're being cut down to the concrete and then redone to today's standards with modern finishes. Mm -hmm. And the ones that have been gutted and renovated are selling at a much, much higher price point. Significantly, yeah. Right. Well, like, the, the end user wants it. Yes. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in probably an upcoming video of a condo tips. Uh, we're gonna talk about staging, whereas the general population just doesn't understand what an empty shell of a room will look like. And it's no fault of their own. It's just, you know, most people don't have that in them. Like it, for me, if someone said, here's a blank canvas, draw me a, a beautiful, like, you know, artist painting, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know where to start, right? But when it comes to condominiums, even real estate in general, I, I can see the room complete. I can yes. see what it looks like. I can see the colors. I can see, you know, what you can do with the space. The average person just doesn't have that ability when it comes to real estate. So Marlowe's, you're gaining that. I think you're yes. seeing more and more of that the more real estate you're involved with and I've you know I've been doing it for 15 years so it's easier for me but when I first started out I still had it for whatever reason I, I think it's just sort of a knack it's sort of a gift I had it's probably the only gift that was given to me when it comes to gifts uh, so at the end of the day uh, you know when it comes to staging properties when it comes to renovating properties the average person doesn't see it so that just is a good opportunity for you to find property and Marlo is getting better and better at that uh, and then you can see the end product and say this is an opportunity and when you get in and renovate that buyers want the end product they don't want the process they don't want to say I want to buy it renovate it pick colors and do all that they don't want that they just don't right okay so so it's a good opportunity so go, so go ahead yeah so I was able to see what it was mm -hmm. um, and see what it could be and then we also were able to calculate the costs mm -hmm. and there was a tremendous profits to be made uh, between you know the renovation costs and the end price so it was a good opportunity so so do you have a, a set price that you use of renovation costs for condos versus homes or like how do you do it uh, we just break it down um, you know layer by layer uh, right. what it's gonna cost for the flooring what it's gonna cost for you know different aspects bathrooms kitchens right. um, and it's just more of a more of a process of shopping around and, and trying to find the best deal. Yeah. So, so my my over the years, my rough estimate on condo reno specifically okay. is generally about fifty to fifty five dollars per square foot. Okay. Okay. Uh, when it comes to homes, that number really explodes. It's not if it, it double, if not triple, when it comes to homes, just right. for whatever reason. There's just more to do. Uh, on that note, we could, it's probably another video we talk about in the future, but when it comes to condominium renovations, th this project, Marlo bought it, I don't even know, when it was March or something like that? It was um, long ago. We got it uh, January, closed on in mid-March. Okay, so mid-March closing, it's May 8th now or 9th, so it's like six weeks or so? Yeah. Six, six weeks. weeks from time to close, reno, uh, and back on the market, fully staged, six weeks. So. 
It's very difficult to do it in a house. The difference with a condo versus a home is that a home, you own everything. You own the windows, you own the roofs, you own the, the wood, you own the walls, you own the floors. You yeah. own everything about that house. In condominiums, we own everything inside the concrete box. Correct. Okay. So the concrete box, the windows, the doors, even on the exterior, that we don't touch that stuff because we don't own it. That's the condominium corporation owns that. So the interior is really just a facelift. You're just doing sort of like what we used to call putting lipstick on a pig. You're just you're just you know making it look nice. Yeah. But the difference with us here at Young Realty Developments and Young Realty, we go all in. We really make sure that everything's done the way it should be done properly. And we'll take you for a tour of the unit, probably another video, just to show you the details that go into this and, and how well it's built. In my personal opinion. I think it's well built, but we got a lot of, you know, we have a lot of happy clients over the years and no one really comes back to us for any, no. any, any fixes. So, um, uh, back to the pricing. So at 50 to $55 a square foot, this unit was about 1900 square feet, approximately something like that. Uh, our budget for that quick math, I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head, but, um, that would be a hundred thousand quick math. So we spent way less than that. It was only about 65,000 on this unit and that we paid more money on like tiles and we really went all out with like different like kitchens. If you could see this, we put like quartz all the way up the, the, the back of the kitchen, which we normally don't do. So we spent more money and we were around 65,000 on in this unit specifically. So, so that being said to spend that kind of money on a house, you wouldn't get past like just the windows. Like yeah. it's just so much money to spend on a home. So that's why I love condominiums. Uh, and, and this unit specifically, I love because I know the building, it's our fourth or fifth one in the building, I think fourth one in the building in the last year and a half. Uh, and when, when you do more of them like that, it, it gets faster and faster. Right, and the other advantage to condo flips versus the housing flips is no permits. Well, no, you need permits. So you need electrical permits if you had, and okay. sometimes plumbing. Now, depending on what you do with plumbing, 99% of the time you can't touch the plumbing in the condominium. So if you're moving a drain, you'll need the city to come right. in with permit, but the boards won't let you do it anyway. So but what we always get done is electrical permits because okay. we change like the panels and like lighting you probably can't see, but we have pot lights everywhere, which most condominiums don't, even new condos, they just don't have them, sadly. I don't know why it's a cost thing. Uh, and the speed thing, you know, most builders, if you're doing 400 units at the same time, you can't do this type of uh, electrical finish. It's very difficult. Well, electrical permits are a lot easier to get than city oh, yeah. permits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Super. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no question about it. But when it comes to permits, yeah, you don't need permits to put a new floor in or a new right. kitchen, stuff like that. So that's a big advantage too when it comes to condominiums. Okay, so, so, so Condo Corner, we're really keen on covering the Toronto market, of course, because that's where we spend most of our days. Uh, and uh, again, we're, we're covering condominiums, all sorts of different things and reviews and uh, uh, whatnot. So, so I have a story though in the news and just, um, so, so this year in 2018, we, we've had a, a mixed market, I would say is, is probably the best term, yep. right? Housing market sort of been iffy at okay. best, uh, it's sort of been flat. It's been down in a lot of areas outside the city speci uh, specifically. You were looking at a house yesterday, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was looking at a house yesterday, fully detached in Pickering. Uh, the person purchased it exactly a year ago uh, for $850,000 and they are now selling it one year later for $700,000. So 150,000 less. 150,000 dollars less. So so just from pure cost alone, it's 150,000 decrease. Yes. But it doesn't include their property taxes they paid last year, their right. land transfer taxes, the commissions they're gonna have to pay now. On the back end, so. That's $200,000 out of their pocket. Yes. Whoa, that's a big, that's a big drop. It's a big drop. Yeah. Right. Um, was it damaged? Like, what, was there something else? Is it? No, there's no just damage, the just, just the market. Um, the house is vacant, so it doesn't show the best. Okay, uh, yeah. The neighbor's house, two doors down, yeah. uh, sold last week for 740. And they're asking seven. And they're asking seven. So potentially good opportunity if you're watching this. So, so give them lots a of opportunity call, available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, when you did a tour of that home, what like is there a potential for increase of value? Like, is there a potential to, to renovate it? It's, if it's vacant, key a, a good lesson here is we're talking about a little bit of staging today as well. Yeah. Right? I'm going to give you another video about staging today. If it's vacant, they should have staged it. There's no question about it. Right. Well, I think it's been on the market so long that they pulled the staging out of it. Oh, they had staging. They had a stage in the pictures. Uh, I opened the unit and uh, no furniture to be <laughs> Nothing seen. There? Yeah. Nothing there. Tricky. Tricky. Uh, the yard is in disrepair. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't have the greatest curb appeal. Right. Um, to be honest, uh, it's a great opportunity to jump on. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. was nothing wrong with the house. It was built in 2012. So fairly so, new. Yeah. Fairly new. Uh, there's not too much available for adding value because it's so new. Right. Well, but look, you can add value where value may not necessarily be so obvious, mm -hmm. like the paint color, 
might be changed. Oh. The interior design could be changed. Yes. Like, you know, staging could be done properly. And you know, I've seen very poor staging yes. over my time. So it's like, <laughs> you might as well just not stage if it's done poorly. Just there's no point of doing yeah. it. You're going to walk in and say, why do you have this weird furniture? Right. right. So, so it has to be done very well. So that's an opportunity where potentially you can give them an offer way less than 700 because you don't know their, their situation. You don't know their situation. So you, don't know, you won't know unless you ask. And so a lot of people always ask me, how do you find opportunity? This is, we're sort of going all over the place today, yeah. but I, I think it's important to know. I do offers every single day on, on properties and opportunities, and that's how I find opportunities. They're asking 700,000. They might take 600,000. I have no idea unless I ask them. You don't know unless you try. Okay, so you know, there's a funny story. You know, this, this, this guy used to go, well, he, was, he was a speaker at an event, and he was really not an attractive human being. He was quite ugly, if, okay. if I may say so, for lack of a better term. But he showed a picture of his wife, and she was a 10 out of 10. She was a knockout. Okay. And he said, does everyone know how I married such a beautiful woman? And the audience is like, no, I have no idea. He goes, I asked her. <laughs> she said, yes. Yeah. So that, that, I used that my whole life. I was like, I get opportunity because I ask people for it. Right. I, I'm not embarrassed to give you a very low offer. Okay. Some, most agents frown upon it. But look, that's my opportunity. It's not their opportunity. So I don't right. care what they think. And I think a lot of people... Agents even, uh, agents and their clients, they're almost embarrassed by their offers at, at points in time. I, you don't know their story. Well, you something don't. you've taught me, if you're not embarrassed by your offer, then it's not a good offer. Yeah, look, I, I don't get embarrassed <laughs> often anymore, so, it's, so I think I need to make it even lower what, what, I, All right. what I've been doing. Yeah. On that note, on 2000 Islington, this property, uh, original offer was 450, wasn't it? Not? Original offer was 440. For 40, it's even lower. Okay, so they're asking 500, was it not? 500. 499 or something yep. like that? Yeah, so 500, we eventually settled on 465, I think. 465, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, we, we came $60,000 below what they're asking. Right. In a hot condo market. Like, it, it's pretty hot. It was pretty hot at the beginning of the year. The right now, second it's, day on the market. Yeah. That we put that offer in. Second day on the market, there was another offer. Yep. And we still got it for less than asking. Correct. So it is possible. And there's so many times that clients and agents get caught up in this emotional turmoil. Like, oh my goodness, there's a bidding war, so we got to give them more. Well, why? Why would I do that? Well, when I submitted our offer for 440, the agent told me they won't even look at my offer uh, unless it's over asking. To. Right. Right? The, yeah. the client wouldn't look at it unless yeah. it was over asking. And... Which, which, again, that's <laughs> breaking a lot of rules there. Breaking a lot of rules. But, okay, so she said she wouldn't look at it unless it's over asking. We got it for less than asking. So that, that's a good moral to the story on this one. Correct. Okay. So uh, just to talk about on uh, the hotness, not that that's a great word, but the hotness of the market right now. So last year, literally like 360 days last year. So not a full year even. Okay. Yeah. It was last May. I bought a condo, uh, pre-construction. I don't mind many pre-constructions now anymore just because there, I know too much about how it works and like... The closing fees are just astronomical. It doesn't really make sense for me as an investment standpoint. But last year, May, I bought one because I really liked the unit. It was in a fantastic deal. It was 557000 for 900 square feet. Downtown Toronto. Two bedrooms, split design, gorgeous layout uh, by Great Golf Homes, an incredible builder, one of my favorites, one of my top fives in the city. And I said, look, this opportunity is too good to be true. So I was willing to buy pre-construction with high closing fees, like crazy closing fees, like big levies, big development costs, they weren't capping anything. Okay. So like closing fees could range from twenty to forty thousand dollars on top of it. So I had a few concessions, I say a few, maybe thirteen, which seems like a lot, but in a, in a builder's contract, that's nothing. All right, okay? it was about forty. There, there's like there's probably like hundred and fifty different things, clauses you have to okay. read through. Okay, probably more, but I had the thirteen concessions that I wanted the builder to to give to me okay. and I, I would move move forward with the deal. And it's like um, you know, cap levies, not not eliminate them, just cap them at a certain amount. Cap the development charges. You know, I want an assignment fee. They said no to assignment fees. I was like, oh, okay. I said, allow me to assign it. No, can't do that. Okay. Allow me to advertise it. No, can't do that. So I was like, okay, these are minor concessions. But when it came down to costs and charges, and we'll, we'll do this in a future video about like what developers get away with. Yep. Okay. Like unknown costs where they'll say, here's the cost, and Terion's gotten okay with it, but they're not as good as they should be. Okay. okay. Um, things like, uh, the, just a really quick example, they'll, they'll charge you $650 for a hydro hookup. But what they won't tell you, they'll charge you $650 for every hydro hookup. So there may be three to four different ones, water, cable, 
a hydro, phone lines, but they won't say that in the contract, but you will right. find out on the day of closing. You say, I thought it was 650, it ends up being like $3,000. Right, like, what's going on here? Utility connections. Yeah, they just say a blanket statement of utility connections. Yeah. Okay, so they, they'll make you believe it's less. So long story short, I, I wanted some concessions. Um, they said no to every single one, all 13. So I had a difficult decision to make. Now, one year ago, I backed out of the deal just because I said, if you can't give me some minor concessions, then it's not worth it for me because I could find better opportunity. You know, it, it, they didn't even start a construction on that one. It's probably going to take them four years to build a building. Yeah. At least it's a big, large building. So, so at least a four year investment, which I hate longer investments like that, but I was willing on this unit because it was such a good deal. Long story short, I go back this year, and I, I, I've been kicking myself. I was like, I love the unit, I love the building, I love the area. I know it's moving around, it's changing. And I said, okay, look, I'll rebuy that unit if it's still available. They're having an event this May. So it was like just a week ago. Yep. Not even. It was April. It was less than a year ago. And, and I said, okay, so I want this unit 1602. Yes, it's available. Great. We're, so get the paperwork ready to go. Okay. They gave me the paperwork. $777,000. I was like, no, no, you got the wrong unit. I wanted 1602, the yeah. 557 from last year. I said, yes, it's gone up $220,000. Yeah. And I was dumbfounded. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> I'm, in this, I'm in the business. I am doing this 24 7. It's all I do is real estate in trial, in condo. And I said, there's no way. You must have made a mistake. There's, yeah. Like, is there like parking included or stuff? No, it's 220000 increase. It's a 39.5% increase. So I was completely awestruck. I was like, there is no way. I was like, I can't do it. I can't justify a $220,000 increase for nothing. That is pure profit. Yep. They already made profit at 557. Okay? Yep. That, that is a selling price that they won last year based on their profit margins. Okay. So they already have the profit to make the, the viable, a viable building. Mm -hmm. Now this is $220,000 just, just because. Because the market moved. Because the market shifted and it shifted fast. Yeah. And it shifted. What, what, I'm going to give my thoughts. Well, why do you think the market shifted this fast? So what's happened? Um, I think that the detached market um, is very, very, was very, very hot at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one year it was moving up 30% mm -hmm. annually, you know, and then in 2017 from January to April, it went up almost another 30% in a oh, yeah. quarter, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Easily, and we're talking, easily, yeah. you know, 30% 30, 30 of a yeah. seven dollars $800,000 home is very significant. Um, and the condo market is a lot more affordable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, if you're well, looking, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially, if you're looking for um, you know something under six hundred thousand dollars or so, right, right. your only option is pretty much a condo in the city. Oh yeah, like you can't get anything under seven hundred thousand as a house, detached home right. in Toronto. They, they don't exist. Doesn't you're exist. just looking in Pickering. You're in Pickering. So it's a forty minute drive from sort of the. I don't know if it's a forty minute drive. Maybe about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. What highway are you driving on? 25 minutes on a good day. Okay, so Let's call it's, it it's 35 minutes, okay, that's just <laughs> what it is on any given day. Uh, so in Pickering, so 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 you think that the, the housing shift this year has put people into the condo market? That's your thought? Yeah, okay, that's, so, that's my thought. Okay, so, so I have a very similar thought. Um, the housing market in Toronto, in the corp, you just take the corp, forget what's happened on the outs of the periphery, because okay. they've been hit the hardest, there's yes. no question about it. If you looked at a $150,000 drop in, from a year, that's going to affect an average house that hasn't moved at all, mm -hmm. but if you combine the two, that means both have gone down by 75000 as an average. Yes. So it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So for me, what I've looked at in the, to the core homes, they haven't gone down much in price. What I'm seeing the shift in is people are, one, they're not being able to afford them from... Right. Um, a mortgage approval standpoint. So the luxury market that has, generally most people don't have mortgages in the luxury market. It's okay. they're, they're paid with cash. Right. Like the three, four, five, five million dollar homes, they're generally paid with cash. They're not financed yep. much. If they are, it's very little, okay? They haven't been affected. Okay. What's happening is that market, that margin of like that one and a half to two million dollar home, they've been in hard because most people get mortgage on theirs of a million dollars or more, okay? okay? They're, they're coming from a condo, so they have some equity, they've sold the condo, they're getting the house, or they're selling two condos and they're coming together for one home. So they yeah. have the equity, but they're not being approved from the mortgage. So what's happening is they're, they're keeping their condominiums, they're staying put, or they're waiting, and they're waiting for the market to shift downwards. It's not happening. So the housing market is going sideways. So what's happening is it's slowing, there's no question it's about slow. it. But it's slowing from like a crazy like average days on market last year, like five or six days, yeah. to now it's like 21 days. 
Okay, look, from a North American <laughs> real estate standpoint, 21 days is still a ridiculously fast time to sell any house. Right. Especially multi-million dollar homes. We're like, spoiled in Toronto. We're very spoiled <laughs> in Toronto. So, But what, what what my big belief is, is the demand has not stopped in Toronto. It hasn't. Okay, if anything, it continues to go up and up and up every single year. So if you look at your basic economics and supply and demand, the big issue with the housing market was there was no supply. Right. They, they weren't building any new homes. People were reluctant to sell. Yep. We were like, where am I going to go? I'm going to sell my million dollar home, buy a two million dollar home. Like, what's the point? Yeah. Right. So they had nowhere to go. So the supply was a big, big issue. That was the big driver the last few years. Okay. That's why the prices. That's why the prices were going up. They're just skyrocketing. Yeah. So this year, what's happening is the the supply has increased slightly. Yeah. Uh, which you would think that would drive the price down, but it hasn't. It's gone sideways because the demand is still too high. But what people are doing, they're conceding a house and going into condo. So the demand is still there. And the supply side on the condo side has been hit hard over the last two years. Right. So if we average, you know, 15 to 1,700 new listings a month, this year I think we're down to like 800 a month. So that's okay. a big problem. And that's really what's pushing the market. So the alternative is, okay, I can't get new, I can't get resale condos what I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't get into the housing market. So a lot of people are shifting into the new market. Right. Okay, the new condos, say, okay, in four years, I'll wait four more years to afford this yes. thing. I'll save up money for four more years and I'll get into it. So one year increase of 39 and a half is the average, 39.8, sorry, was the average increase in new construction condo in Toronto from 2017 to 2018. That is astronomical. That is, yeah. a, that, is, <laughs> that is a crazy increase. And the crazy thing is the yeah. condos are selling out. Uh, when the new condos launch, they're selling out in a matter of a weekend. Selling out. So we are, we are VIP agents. We are top agents. We're the front line of all these projects. The problem is we can't even get into them. I can't yeah. even. People are like, yeah, I'll take one. I'm like, it's already gone. Before you even return the phone call, the building's sold out. Yeah. They're pre-sold. Most builders are pre-selling these things. What Great Gulf did last year, which is very smart on their part, they understood the market was shifting. They actually held back a large percentage of their units. So they, they, they sold out half the buildings last year and they're selling the rest of this year and they're making big margins on right. it, okay? So for me, my standpoint, from my client's uh, standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily recommend pre-construction now. Not on a 40% spike, it doesn't make any sense. Because right. you can still get resale opportunity. You can get opportunity like this one we're sitting in. You can get opportunity like the ones in Pickering. You gotta call Marl, he's an amazing guy when he comes to this stuff. He finds, you find op you find more opportunity than most people, not more than me, but you, you know. <laughs> I, I learned from the, from yeah, the yeah, 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 so but, but I, I only look for the opportunity for myself. It's generally not for clients, but you're, you're working with clients day yeah. in and day out. Work so. with clients day in, day out. Yeah. Everyone has different criteria. Mm -hmm. um, what I do, I get on there, I hunt the MLS and I'm looking f to match you with the criteria that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. do, do you use MLS a lot? Like, like, is that where you find most of your opportunity? Um, it's a, found a fair bit from MLS. Uh, we do marketing. Um, we have a, um, a program where we actually buy condos as well. Yeah. Um, and then the, what we buy can be you know, re resold to our, our clients um, who are looking for opportunities as long as they match. Right. Right. Sometimes we go in there and, and submit the offer, work out the price, do all the negotiating beforehand, and that way I'm able to bring you know signed paperwork to my clients and say, here's the unit, this is the price, is it something you're interested in? This is what you can do with it. And um, it's on a case by case basis, and uh, investors love it. Absolutely, there's no question about it. So you, you work obviously with not just investors though? No, nope, not just investors. So just like end users, Buying, sellers, selling, yeah. leasing, management, we do yeah. it all. Okay, excellent, excellent. So is there anything else you want to cover today on the condo corner? Uh, no, that's pretty like, you, you must have some frontline stories of pre-construction over the last like six months. Uh, pre the craziness. Pre-construction, um, just ridiculous lineups. Um, with the Daniels Lighthouse, um, I was yeah. in there, uh, purchased a unit. Um, they launched on a, on a Saturday morning. Uh, they didn't even hold the event inside the actual sales center. They put up two huge tents. That's it. And yeah, huge tents. Uh, it was in the winter. They had the heaters going. Yeah. And the place was just packed. It was by appointment only. Yeah. Um, and it was just packed with people the entire day. Um, you're lucky to walk out with the unit at the end of the day. The other, the other clever thing that builders are doing this year is they're pre-selling to their existing client base, which I've been preaching to them forever. I right. said, why are you guys going out and getting new buyers every single launch? Because it's very expensive. You gotta hire realtors, you're paying on commissions, yeah. you gotta advertise. I said, just if you go back to your, your database, say, look, we sold you know 10,000 units over the last 20 years. Yeah. There must be someone in there who wants to buy another unit, <laughs> right? Like I've been preaching this for so long. And, and so that's what they were doing the last couple of years. Okay. So they're going back to their existing database and saying, we're pre-launching this condo only to our clients. Yeah. 
And that's why these buildings are selling out so fast. If there's very little left over by the time it even gets to us, and we're the front lines. We're, the, we're ready to go. Well, so by the time it gets to the public, there's no, there's no one who is on their own as a buyer who wants pre-construction, who's getting any kind of a deal without an agent. No. It's not happening. It just isn't. So, so anyways, you need to call us, Young Realty. You need to call Marlo specifically. You can try and get a hold of me, but I'm a busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite stories, actually, um, yeah. when we're talking about it. Yeah. I had a 25-year-old client. He's a first-time buyer. Uh, we were started shopping for him about the end of 2016. Okay. Fall 2016, we started looking for a one-bedroom in Den, mm. uh, something he's going to rent out and keep as an investment. He ended up purchasing a unit downtown, uh, one bedroom, for three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Resale. Resale. Resale unit. Okay. Resale unit. Three hundred and twenty k. One year later, exactly, mm-hmm. his unit also went up another forty percent. Yeah. yeah. When, so when was this? Two thousand sixteen. December two thousand sixteen. To two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. December. Forty percent increase. So so what's that? Like one hundred twenty thousand. Uh, about one hundred twenty thousand. Wow, that's not bad. For one year. One year. One year. Doing Doing nothing. Yeah. It's more than he earns. I uh, had <laughs> his job. That is yeah, nine yeah, to five. Yeah, 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 right. uh, obviously, he's a very happy client, and of what he's going to do is going to let that equity grow a little bit more. Pull the equity. Buy so he didn't sell. Didn't sell yet. Still, still, still got the tenant in there. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a great story. So, so look, if you're buying condominiums downtown Toronto, here's the lesson: it's going to go up forty percent a year. I can't, obviously, I can't <laughs> guarantee that, but it's a good lesson because, look, in Pickering, he was just there last year. It's gone down by one hundred fifty thousand dollars. What's the percentage of seven hundred? It's probably about. Uh, Right around a 25% mark, okay, right. decrease. Whereas you're working with us, you're getting a 40% increase in your pricing. If you're, if you're shopping pre-construction, you're shopping condominiums and you're doing it properly. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, man, so that's this week's episode of Condo Corner, and we'll talk to you again next week.